In this step, we are going to implement a form to edit customer objects. Let's create a new class for the form. Right-click this package and select New Class. Use Customer Form as the name of the class and define the super class as Form Layout. Form Layout is similar to Vertical Layout where it renders captions to the left of the fields. We have to define a field for each property in the customer class. Let's use a text field for the first name and let's duplicate this line and change this to last name. Let's do it again for the email. And let's use native select for the status and the date field for the birth date. We also need a couple of buttons, one for saving a customer and another one for deleting. Okay, looking good for the input fields, but we'll need a reference to the service. A reference to the customer currently being edited and a reference to the UI class because we want to update the list of customers from here. Let's implement a constructor for this class. Control space, select constructor and let's accept a UI instance here and assign it to my UI. Right, let's call set size undefined here to make the form use a minimum amount of space required by its content. And let's define a horizontal layout. And this time, let's use this constructor to add the components. This is for the save and delete buttons. Assign this to a new variable. And now we can add all the components into the form. First name, last name, email, status, birth date, and the buttons. Cool. Let's add this form to the UI. So let's create a new instance here, customer form. And of course we pass this UI to it. We want the form to be placed next to the grid on the right, not below it. So we cannot just add it here instead. Let's create a horizontal layout with the grid and then the form. Assign this to main. Also, we want this main layout to use all the available space. Same for the grid. And well, we also need to call set expand ratio to make the grid expand as much as possible. Finally, instead of adding the grid here, we need to add the main layout. All right, let's see how this looks like. Save the changes and restart the server. There you go. We have the form next to the grid. However, if you click status, there are no options there. Let's fix that and add some more functionality to the form. So how do we add options to a select component? That's easy. Just call set items and pass a collection of customer status objects in this case. Let's also improve the user experience a bit. First, we can add a style name to the save button, button primary. That changes the color of the button. And let's also add a click shortcut, enter. Now users can press enter instead of clicking the button. And let's finish this implementation by adding some methods that we will need in the next step. At this point, we have a form with all the input fields, but how do we connect the values in these fields to the customer object? Well, we use a binder for customer objects. And we can say binder use the instance fields in this class or the binding. This means that all these fields are going to be automatically bound to the corresponding Java fields in the customer class. But we need to provide a way to tell this form which customer instance to bind. So let's create a set customer method and tell the binder to use that customer instance. Also, if we set a new customer for this form, then it makes sense that the delete button is visible only if the customer was persisted at some point before, otherwise we cannot delete it. We should make sure that this form is visible when we set a new customer for it. And let's select all the text in the first name field to improve the user experience again. 
The last thing we need to do is to handle the click events on the save and delete buttons. For delete, we need to, well, obviously delete the customer, update the list or the grid, and hide this form because we are done with it. We have to do something similar for the save button. Save the customer, update the list, and hide the form. We can call these methods from click listeners. One for the save button and another one for the delete button. And that's about it for this step. You can run the application as usual, but you will notice that the form is not connected to the application just yet. We're going to fix that in the next step.